This video and all content on this channel is performed by a pest control professional and it is always recommended to hire a pest control pro in your area to perform any pest control in or outside your home. Pesticides can harm you and your loved ones. Anyone who is performing the information in this video is doing so at their own risk. If you decide to try the info provided in this video, please always check with the local laws in your area and read the labels of any product you use. The label is the law. Hey everybody, this is Jason Akers again with Green Acres Pest Control. And today, we're gonna talk about how bed bugs can kill you. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. If you really like it, consider subscribing to my channel. Really appreciate everybody coming out and visiting me on my live streams. I get on live every Thursday night, usually after nine o'clock, where you can come on and ask me any question you want about pest control. I've been doing pest control all my life for, you know, since I was six, seven years old, and I'm 40. So, you know, 30 some years of my life, I've, I've been doing pest control. And so I really enjoy it. I like when people come out and ask me questions. I don't mind answering anything you've got. And also uh, anything I talk about today as far as, you know, pesticides, uh, how to get rid of bed bugs, which we're gonna go over. We're gonna go over a little bit today. Um, all those links are in my Amazon page. You just click down in the description below down there, uh, click show more and go down to the Amazon link, take a look and it's all the stuff that, that I use in my business. And uh, I mean, I don't have to, you know, but I like people be able to know what I use uh, and how to get hold of it. So anyway, let's get back onto the video. I've been I've talked for like a minute on crap that isn't important to you. You want to know how bed bugs can kill you. Now, this is not a video to terrify you. I'm not trying to scare you. I don't want to scare you. Um, honestly, it's clickbait title. I want you to understand the dangers of bed bugs. I want you to have a respect for them like I do and understand that it's something that you don't want to let just go on without controlling the issue. So I was sent a graphic from another exterminator. They actually sent it to me. And I'm going to show it on the screen right now. Uh, and I'm going to read, read it, actually. But it's uh, one bed bug, one female bed bug that's been inseminated. She's able to lay eggs. One female that's been left alone to do her handiwork within nine months becomes 30, over 37,000 bed bugs. They require, at that number, they require at least one pint of blood a week. That's about how much they feed on in, in, in that much time. In a year, if you left them alone and didn't do anything, didn't spray or anything like that, in a year, one female bed bug can become 38 million bed bugs requiring up to a thousand pints of blood a week to survive. That is just insane amounts of blood. All right. Leeching is something that people don't do anymore because the leeches can bleed you to death. If you've got those kinds of numbers of bed bugs in your home, they absolutely will cause you health issues. I mean, from the way I see it. Now, I'm not a doctor. I can't tell you one way or another. But if they're needing that, I mean, the human body does not have that many pints of blood in it. All right. One pint a week is insane amount. And then you want to multiply that by a thousand? That's crazy. And that's only three months from the nine month mark. Okay, these are facts. These are scientific facts. So the problem is, is that the bit, and, and, and we're going to go over other ways that you can die from having bed bugs. So stay tuned. And I'm going to talk about how to get rid of them effectively and how to cut the numbers down to zero. So you don't have them, they don't need any blood if, if it's zero. Now, when you just first get bed bugs, they don't need a lot of blood. They don't need hardly anything. Pin pricks, they don't need much. It might bite you two or three times, but and that's it. Um, that's all they need. But the problem is, is when you have so many females laying so many eggs, they need a blood meal to lay eggs. And so that's where you get into those, you know, large numbers of blood being needed because they just continue to multiply. It takes several months. Like just in two months, it's like 28 bed bugs. You know, one female becomes 28 bed bugs in just two months. But the problem is, is as they numerate, they add more and more and more to the equation, 
they just multiply and you have more and more and more and more on top of each other. So it's a compounding problem uh, that you're not dealing with. But you know, a lot of people don't even realize they have bed bugs until they get to about you know three to six months because it's something that you, you, you have to look back in your timeline and be like, where was I? What did I do? How did I get these things? Oh, I didn't go to a hotel. It's been like six months since I was even in a hotel. That must be how I got them. And it's a real common common answer. You know, when I ask people, I was like, well, how do you think you got bed bugs? Because that's like the number one question you should ask all of your customers, or you could even you should even ask yourself, is how did I get the bed bugs? Where did I go? Who came in my house? Who did I visit? You know, did they have bed bugs? Did the hotel? Do I remember getting bug bites at a hotel? You know, things like that. You need to try to remember that because that's how you can ensure you don't continue to have bed bugs in the future. I mean, you think about it, if it's a family member and you're babysitting their children, for an example, they may be bringing them back into your house periodically every so often. And so even if you, even if you treat your home, you're still gonna have problems with bed bugs again because the people can still keep bringing them into your home. So other ways that bed bugs can kill you. Now the obvious thing, like I said, blood letting like that, that's pretty crazy, you know, how much blood they need to survive. And that's the most damning evidence against bed bugs in your home is the amount of blood they actually need to survive after a year. I mean, that's not a long time. I mean, I've been in houses where people have had them for six or seven years. In fact, I'll show you a, a video right here that I took in a house. It's probably one of the worst bed bug infested homes I've ever been in in my entire career. Uh, it's pretty severe. And the, the thing is, is that you got to realize these people had this problem for a very, very, very long time. They weren't able to really take care of it on their own. They were, they really weren't able to take care of themselves. They were uh, semi-invalid people. And so they really relied on other people to help them and the people that were helping them weren't. And so they just dealt with this problem, just basically being tortured for years by these bed bugs. And so you got to realize that, you know, I show these videos, I show pictures sometimes of, of crazy infestations and I always get these comments like, how could they have lived that long with that problem? And it's like, well, because they couldn't help it. Some people just can't help it. And so, you know, you need to, I mean, I have a lot of compassion for these people. I get into their house. I feel sorry for them. You know, I, I genuinely hate the fact that they've had to deal with these bugs for that long. And I love when they call me on the phone and they're crying because they're so happy they finally got a night's sleep, a decent, good night's sleep. After dealing with these bed bugs for so long, they haven't had a decent night's sleep. And that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about not getting good sleep. It's very important to get good, uninterrupted sleep at night, daily. You know, not just every so often, but every day. You need to sleep every night, get good sleep every night. And so when you don't get good sleep, you start making crazy decisions. You're willing to, to do nutty things. Like, so when, when my little girl was born, she didn't sleep. She was insomniac. She's, she was a real light sleeper. You could roll over in the covers and she'd wake up just because the sound that they made when they moved and rustled would wake her because she's always sleeping in a crib. But she would wake up if she heard the, the sheets ruffle. Um, I would leave for work at 3 a.m. I would go and park in a Walmart parking lot and I would sleep for two hours until I actually had to go to work because it was the only way that I got any sleep. There was one week that I got only eight hours of sleep. So I know what it's like to have to go these long periods of time without any sleep. I couldn't imagine going, you know, seven years without sleep. And like people are going that long. They're not getting good sleep. They're getting horrible sleep. And it affects your brain chemistry when you don't get good sleep. Brain health and good sleep are like this. You've got to get good sleep. So when you've gone that long, you make crazy decisions like I'm going to go sleep in a Walmart parking lot. I'm going to basically be homeless for a couple hours and sleep in a Walmart parking lot. And that's not really the safest option. It's not, you know, I mean, I thought it was a pretty good idea when I was exhausted. And then I would come home and on the way home, I would stop at like a Lowe's 
And I remember I used to sleep in the back of a Lowe's parking lot because it butted up next to a Sonic and there was never any traffic really bad over in that spot. So I would pull over there and take another two hour nap on my way home and I would call my wife and she was like so jealous because I actually got sleep and she wasn't getting any sleep either. The two of us couldn't sleep at all. And that's when we decided to, you know, take the company uh, 24 hours. We, we decided this, she was like two or three, Emma was, and we decided to just do a 24 hour pest control business because I mean, I wouldn't get any sleep anyway, might as well. So, you know, I understand what it's like. And so what people do is they get bed bugs and they're willing to do whatever it takes to get rid of the bed bug problem. They get on YouTube and they get on Google and they start searching all of these ways to try to eliminate this horrible problem that they've been, uh, you know, blessed with. All right. Um, and so they will, they will read what other people claim to have done. And they're good salesmen. You know, you can sell whatever. If you can lie through your teeth, you can sell anything to somebody. And they'll buy it because they don't want the problem anymore. I've fallen into the trap of buying from a salesman and it, what they said just wasn't true at all. I've done it. It's happened to all of us. All of us have fallen for something at some point in our lives, been tricked by somebody, and it's just a trick, all right? Diatomaceous earth, alcohol, these are the two probably most dangerous things you can use in your home to try to get rid of bed bugs. I get flamed hard on YouTube about my stance against diatomaceous earth and alcohol. All right, alcohol is a highly flammable substance. It is used in gasoline. It is used in lighter fluid. It is absolutely flammable to the point of igni ignition. It will blow up. The fumes that come off of evaporating alcohol are highly flammable. There were two cases, I went over this on one of my live streams one night, there were two cases in Ohio, back to back, where two people were trying to get rid of their bed bugs using alcohol, and the house caught on fire, burned to the ground. Fire damage. Just trying to get rid of bed bugs using alcohol. It is highly dangerous. You go and you try to get rid of bed bugs in your house, and you use alcohol, and you have sprayed that stuff everywhere. There are so many possibilities to catching your home on fire. I don't even want to list them all. And you're, you're, you're soaking your bed sheets, your linens, your pillows in rubbing alcohol. All right, think before you do it. Just think, do I really want to soak a bed in a flammable fluid? It is not safe. Don't do it. It can kill you. The, f the fumes that come off of alcohol aren't really even that safe to breathe in, not at that concentration. They're everywhere. It's harmful to your health. I am here on YouTube to help you understand how to get rid of bugs and be safe doing it. The pesticides that I tell you to use, a lot of people are like, well, breathing in pesticides is harmful to your health. Well, yeah, I mean, if you're going to use pesticide like a nasal spray, don't do that. That's stupid. That's dumb. But the evaporation that comes off of a chemical is not a toxic vapor. Most pesticides don't produce a toxic vapor at all. Evaporation, it doesn't hurt you. It won't hurt you. Read the label. You know, if the label says you need to wear a respirator, it might not be safe to breathe. But if the label of the pesticide doesn't say, hey, you should wear a respirator when applying this chemical, then more than likely it does not create a toxic vapor. You know, if you're going to fog, like, so goodbye, buy a bug bomb. All right, go, or don't buy one. The, the garbage, don't buy them. Don't buy them, just read them. But go read the label of a bug bomb. It gives you the directions of use right, right on the box. You know, you go to, go to Kroger or go to, you know, Dollar General or somewhere, you know, and, and pick up that box of bug bombs and read it. And it'll tell you right on the box that, you know, you have, when you, when you set those things off, you can't be in the house because the fumes and the, the, the vapor that comes off of them is toxic. You can't breathe it because you're, you're treating the air. You're treating the whole air with a pesticide and then the pesticide kind of drifts down 
onto all your surfaces and it's nasty and that's another thing I don't recommend using those either um, and this is the, I, I'm gonna go over this too bug bombs and so bug bombs if you set off a bug bomb let's <clears throat> let's say you have gas all right you have a gas hot water heater or a gas stove or you know you, you know, basically gas appliances in your house and you forget to turn the pilot light off so most bug bombs have like an alcohol or a petroleum distillate it's an oily residue inside the pesticide itself and the particulate is so super tiny that it becomes extremely flammable and if you don't turn off the pilot light to your stove you blow your house up it will actually explode and it will turn your house into a bomb and it'll blow your house up um it's it's dangerous. Your bug bombs are very dangerous. I don't recommend them. And not only that, it does, they don't work. You know, bed bugs live in the cracks and the crevices. They don't live on the surfaces. And so when you set off a bug bomb in your house and it sprays this, you know, oily, nasty, gross pesticide all over the place, it gets on your walls, it gets on your stovetop, it gets on every single surface of the house, and then you have to come in and wipe that crap up. It's disgusting. It's nasty. You know, you don't want that stuff in your house. It's not healthy for you. It's on all the surfaces, but <clears throat> like I said, you're like asleep. You're not thinking. You know, you're watching me. Hopefully, you're thinking better now that you're watching me. But another thing that people do on the internet is they talk a lot about diatomaceous earth. So let's beat this dead horse. All right, diatomaceous earth is dangerous. And 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 I get like I said, I get flamed. Horrible. For saying this but I am willing to tell you the truth I am not gonna lie to you I am not gonna try to tell you that you can kill your bed bugs for five dollars because you can't you can't it's you just can't all right I know you want to be able to I know you don't want to have to spend a lot of money to kill these bugs and you know what is a lot of money a lot of money is different from one person to the next fifty dollars is uh, well, it's about the highest I've ever seen Crossfire, but maybe higher. I don't know. Everything is going up now, so you might have to spend a little more for it nowadays. But the link for Crossfire is on my Amazon page. You can go check it out. But um, it fluctuates like the stock market, and, and that's what I recommend people treat for bed bugs. That's what I recommend you buy, and that's what I recommend you use, and that's going to work. And a lot of people go on my diatomaceous earth videos that I've got, and they talk about how I don't know what I'm talking about, and I'm just trying to uh, keep people from doing what works so they don't have to pay me. I'm going to tell you how to do it. I'm going to teach you how to do it. I've been teaching people how to kill bed bugs for six years on YouTube. I don't care if you buy from me. Yes, yeah, sure, that's fine. I'll kill your bed bugs. But I can't service anybody outside of the state of Virginia. I'm only licensed in the state of Virginia. And YouTube is a worldwide platform. It's a great place to be able to share ideas and teach people your trade, which is what I'm doing. I, I mean, I'm a tradesman. I'm, I've been doing bed, bed bug work for over 20 years and pest control for over 30. I enjoy my job. I love my job. And I want to teach others how to do my job because I like it. I enjoy it. I expect, you know, when I start hiring technicians, I expect them to be able to pass my courses. I expect them to watch my videos. I expect them to understand as much as I do. It's, it's important to me. And so I'm sitting here teaching you because I want you to be able to do it too. It's not a problem. It doesn't hurt my business teaching you how to take care of yourself. I want you to be able to take care of yourself. If you can't afford an exterminator, you're not going to buy from me anyway. And so I want you to understand how to do it correctly so you don't hurt yourself your children or your pets. Crossfire is a very safe pesticide. It doesn't have, it's a very loose label, doesn't have a lot of PPE requirements. It's, um, you don't have to wear a face mask or a respirator when you apply it. You, you just have to wear, uh, you, in fact, gloves aren't even on the list. It, it says that they're recommended but not required. Um, you know, long pants, you know, shoes and stuff, and long sleeve shirt. They, they don't want you to spray all over your body or anything, but it's not that harmful it kills bugs it's very effective against insects you know bed bugs and it kills other bugs too but it's really only labeled for bed bugs and I only recommend it for bed bugs because it's expensive it's probably the most expensive pesticide per ounce that that I own but it's uh, it's very effective it's a very effective solution for bed bugs and so you know I have other videos go search my channel be sure to subscribe like the channel and go and search in the uh, there's like a little search bar where 
you can search my bed bug videos and it will tell you, you, know, you find the ones where I actually do treatments. I show people how to treat their home for bed bugs to eliminate bed bugs. I've got you know, people that, that have been subscribed to me for years and they've been able to get rid of their own bed bugs on their own and, and just by using Crossfire and following my advice. Uh, in fact, I'll, I'll do a shout out. I did another video too, but I'll shout out to Jennifer Lego. She's uh, one of my mods for my live streams. Whenever I do my live stream, she's sitting there and she kind of hangs out and makes sure people behave themselves. She got rid of her bed bugs by just following my advice and she used Crossfire and she got rid of them. And she's an advocate for you know not using alcohol. Alcohol is really dangerous, and that's one of the reasons I brought it up is because of her. She you know she says I don't talk about it enough, and so I thought I'd make this video explaining how alcohol is dangerous. Alcohol is dangerous. Okay, don't don't do that. Just don't. I know you're you're frustrated and you want to get rid of your bug problem, but alcohol is not the solution. Um, alcohol doesn't last. There's no residue. Uh, diatomaceous earth will last forever as long as it stays dry. It'll work. It'll kill bugs, but it will also damage you. It'll cause you to get silicosis and lung damage. And I mean, look it up on Google. It's it's actually you know it's it's very harmful to humans to breathe it in. Now people take it as a herbal supplement. They take it orally. I, I don't. I'm not a doctor. I can't tell you if it's good or bad to ingest it into your stomach. You know, but when it go, comes to your lungs, the scientific evidence is there. It's there. And it and it and they explain that it is harmful to you. A silicate. It's a silicate, which is a it's 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 a family of uh, substances. Uh, I want to use that term because uh, uh, it, sand is a silicate. Uh, silica silicon dioxide is a silicate. That's what's in uh, uh, Semexa. Uh, it's actually in a lot of diatomaceous earth formulations because diatoms are crustaceans. They're, they're microscopic crustaceans that are dredged from you know, different areas of the world. And they mix it with typically silica dioxide, which is like a, like a or silicon, silicon or whatever. It's, 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 um, it's a dust that kills bugs. And so the way it works is the bug has to crawl through it. And when it does, it causes little micro abrasions on their exoskeleton, which causes them to dehydrate because bugs don't naturally dehydrate. They don't have skin like a human. They have an exoskeleton. And so everything is kind of sealed in there. All the water and everything stays inside their body. It doesn't evaporate uh, like we do. You know, we, we sweat. We, we, we get rid of it through our skin. And so we have to constantly drink water every day. I mean, I got a 40 ounce cup right here. I drink water every day. And so uh, if I didn't, I'd dehydrate and I would die. And so bed bugs dehydrate through their skin. And so if you cut open their exoskeleton, they will dehydrate and die. Slowly, but they will die. Um, the problem is, is that if the diatomaceous earth is put out so thick that you can see it, well, the bed bugs see it too, and they're not gonna walk across it. Would you walk across a sea of broken glass? Of course not, especially if you weren't wearing any clothes. There's no way you would do that. That is insane, and the bed bug knows better, and so they won't do it either it actually will cause them to um, go into other areas of the house that you haven't had bed bugs before. It'll make them live up near the ceiling. It'll make them live in the wall. It'll make them go places where there isn't any diatomaceous earth so they can survive. And bed bugs can survive without a blood meal for 10 to 18 months. And that's, that's a long time. That's a really long time for a bed bug to go without a blood meal. A nymph can live about four months without a blood meal, which is before they become full-fledged adults. So. These are things you need to know. These are facts. This is factual, scientific proof, evidence. All right? It, 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 I've done so many videos on this stuff, but I wanted to try to kind of compile it all into one. I know it's been a long video, and I really appreciate that you've hung in all the way to the end. And if you have, leave me a comment below and just tell me, uh, Jason, stop talking so much. You run off at the mouth because I stayed here for 30 minutes and pretty much learned everything I could learn from all of your other videos. But it's the truth. I, I want you to be safe. I want you to get rid of your bugs. I don't want you to have bed bugs. I don't want you to have ants. I don't want you to have spiders. I don't want you to have mice or crickets or, you know, I don't want you to have these things that people just, I mean, they're, they're horrible. You know, having bugs in your house and vermin in your house, it's not a very pleasant place to live. You know, you build a house, you put your walls up and your roof over your house to protect you from these kind of critters and then they get in the house anyway, and it's like you can't get away from them. You go camping, 
You want to know how many bugs and vermin live on the earth? Go camping. One night. Just one night. I camp a lot. I love to camp. But you're going to be right there with the critters. And you build a house to get away from the critters, to try to keep yourself protected. And then they get in your house too. So I want to protect you. I want you to know. I want you to have the knowledge you need to do this on your own. I don't, you know, I'm not trying to, you know, make a living off of YouTube. I, I have my own business. I'm happy with my business. I keep my family fed. That's all I really worry about. I keep a roof over their head. I keep them fed. That's all you really need to be happy in life. And uh, so you guys have a really great day. I appreciate it. And don't forget, hang out with me on my live streams. I have a Skype number I've purchased so you can call me and talk to me. Uh, it's the only time I really answer calls through that number. But um, like I said, pop in. Sometimes it's a little bit later this time of year. I get a lot of, uh, I'm a 24 hour pest control business, so I get a lot of calls after hours. And sometimes I have to go out on emergency calls in the middle of the night. And I may not be able to, you know, meet every live stream, but I really do try to get there every Thursday night after 9 30. Uh, the reason it's so late, it's 9 30 Eastern time. I live in Virginia. So um, the reason it's so late, I do have children. I've got four children, and my youngest, as of the filming of this video, is only five months old. And so got to kind of get the kids to bed and then I can sit and talk to you for a little while and answer your questions. So if you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to leave it below. I read every single comment, every single comment that anyone has ever made on a video of mine. I have read every one of them, every word, even when they're, you know, three or four pages long, it feels like. I read them all. Um, so don't hesitate to leave a comment below. If you need to ask me now, ask. Uh, otherwise, I will see you Thursday night. Pop in and, and like I said, you can call me ask me over the phone and that helps a lot of people because then they can hear your question and they can hear my answer and there trust me there are other people that have the exact same question you do and so uh we can help each other y'all have a great night great day wherever you are whatever you're doing i really appreciate you coming and, and sticking with me for this long and watching this boring video about how bed bugs can kill you you have a real great night and uh i will see you in the next one thanks a lot like and subscribe to the channel bye